Hello, hello, YouTube. I am just checking in on the decluttering and how the dishes are going. Um, last week, I had asked everybody to try to do their dishes once a day. Um, even if you have to sit down every five minutes and then get back up and redo your dishes, that's fine. Uh, just do them once a day if you want. That way, you stay on top of the dishes and keep that sink shiny and clean. And we also started decluttering last week one of the cupboards. Um, let's start and focus under another cupboard or a drawer. Um, under the sink is a great place to start and usually probably the least time consuming. You know, if you have two or something and it's getting near the end, just take and dump it out. Dump it into the new one if you have room. If not, just chuck it. If it's something that's cheap, there's no point in really holding on to it like... All those little bottles of spray cleaners and stuff. If it only costs like a buck, buck and a half, and there isn't much in it, get rid of it or use it up. Uh, let's focus on that project today. Um, I know I promised in one of my prior videos that I would show a picture of the little girl that passed away in here. And I will do so in just a few minutes. I'm just going to throw some more ghost stories your way from my lovely haunted house. Okay, um, I can clearly remember one night coming back from a DJ gig, and it was about 3 or 4 in the morning, and I was laying on the couch, and I started to doze off, and I could remember hearing voices. It sounded like the TV was on really loud, so I'm like, Roger's got the TV on upstairs, and it's time to get up, go to bed, and turn that loud TV down. Well, I got off the couch, and... And I walked towards the bottom of the stairs, and I could hear, I could still hear it, but it didn't sound as loud. So I started to go up the stairs, and it just felt like somebody was behind me. And it seemed like the closer that I got to the upstairs bedroom TV, the fainter it got. So I'm thinking, okay, so maybe he's turning it down. I get into the bedroom, he is sound asleep, and there's no TV on. Yeah. My oldest son, Bud, when he lived here, said that he could always hear, like, people talking, but he could never really make out what they were saying, and I so understand what he means by that, because I hear that quite frequently. Yeah, you just can't make out what they're saying, but you can still hear them. It's almost like a TV would sound, or the mall, if you go to the mall, and there's people talking in the background. There's all these voices, but you just can't make out what they're saying. So anyway, it gets better than that. Um, I was, I think it was the next day, Roger had fallen asleep, taking a nap on the couch. And then about an hour or so later, he, he finally got up and he came out to me and he says, you're not going to believe what I just saw. He says, I saw a little girl looking down at me. I'm like, Really? He goes, yeah. He goes, I just closed my eyes. I didn't dare say anything. And then I opened him up later on. She was gone, and that's when I came out here. Well, if I saw somebody looking down at me, I would be yelling. Yelling. <laughs> he said that she was wearing like a plaid skirt. So, I don't know. You know, he hasn't mentioned seeing her again, but he has seen like dark shadows and mists and stuff. Um... So right around that same time, we were up in bed one night, and it's I got woke up because I could hear this loud footsteps, so I'm yelling to my sons, I'm yelling Chris, thinking he came in late, and uh, no answer, so I yelled to Seth, no answer, everybody was sleeping, it was really bizarre, and then I heard like noises downstairs, I knew somebody was here. So I'm waking Roger up. I'm like, get up, get up. He goes, why? I said, somebody's downstairs. And he fell back to sleep. Eventually, I think he got up and nobody was here. The kids were sound asleep. Um, yeah, it was just really bizarre. Um, I can't remember all the stories without going into my journal, but I'll go back and I'll look at some of the things and let you know. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a picture of a little girl <clears throat> that lived here that had also passed away. Um, prior, I had shown everybody that this was the guy that had died upstairs, Francis. He'd actually slit his throat into the bed in, in one of the bedrooms upstairs. 
I'm still not quite sure which one. This is his daughter. She also passed away um, at the age of four from appendicitis. So is that part of our ghostly activity? I have no doubt because when I used to hook up the infrared cameras, we would always see like a man figure and stuff um, upstairs. It just always seemed to stem from upstairs. Now, I guess there's also uh, another guy that my daughter always sees and my son, my oldest son saw. And this guy looked, well, he said that he looked like he was maybe from the 60s. He had like that 60s, early 70s look with a little, you know, the little beard thing going on and stuff. But like I mentioned before, Mr. Spella also died here, so it is possible that it could be him. Now, I've also heard a female voice in here, so I, I really don't know what to say. I mean, could it be his wife? Or could it be something else? Or could it just be time replaying itself? When I did do the EVPs and stuff in here, um, and I looked for background voices or for voices in the house, uh, most of them were masculine voices. There were a couple that had like a female sound to it, but... Most of them were masculine. Now, one interesting thing about Francis is, is he was Irish. And I guess, you know, his parents, you know, grandparents, whatever, came from Ireland. And in the EVPs, one of the guys does have a very Irish accent. So that's kind of interesting, too. Um, this is what Francis looked like in his <clears throat> later years right here. Um... That probably would have been about the, what he looked like about the time that he had passed away. Because that looks like it was taken. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I would have guessed sometime in like, yeah, maybe the 40s. I don't know. 50s. Early 50s at that. But that's kind of what he looked, that's what he looked like in his later years. Um probably sitting here right now listening to me talking about him. I don't know if he appreciates that or not. And one other story that was really interesting um, it's also found in my EVPs is back, oh, I would say maybe 10 years ago, I was getting dressed up for an old time photo and like, kind of like the 1912 look. And as I was sticking like a cameo pin here on my throat, I was in my bedroom in the closet area because I had a like a dresser in there and as I was putting the pen on I had this really strange urge to just like stab it in my throat and rip it around so I threw the pen and I came downstairs and I ended up taking the picture without the pen and I thought my god what the heck was that and I wondered you know am I losing my mind but or is this something else and of course you know because he did slit his throat upstairs uh, and chances are good that I was either picking up on what he was feeling or maybe he was, you know, throwing that at me. I would hope not. But anyway, I had asked about that on one of the EVPs and, um, he did definitely said that it was him. Um, I know a lot of times that when you are recording things and you're hearing from ghosts, you're not always getting the ghosts is, you know, it could be somebody playing that it's somebody else. So you have to be really careful. So anyway, that was more updates on some of the haunted stuff. And uh, I hope you guys feel free to go down below, you know, and a comment on this. I would love to hear from you. Uh, also, you know, I, I really urge people to go on down there and subscribe. I love to hear from people. You know, I like to hear your stories and your input and... Until then, I will let you guys go, and thank you so much for watching.